Welcome to Wrong Time Watch. My name is Kevin, and today we're looking at the Dumoro DM01. This watch is currently on Kickstarter, and the campaign ends on the 10th of this month, which is currently March. Uh, before we get into the watch, if you could like the video, comment, and subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And also down in the description, I'll leave a link to my friend's channel, um, Casper at Ghost Watches. He has also done a good video on this watch as well. So as I mentioned, this watch is currently on Kickstarter. Uh, this is a new company, uh, new watch brand, Dumoro. They're based out of California. These watches will be assembled in California uh, of imported parts from Japan, China, Switzerland. So I really appreciate that this watch is assembled in the USA. It's a familiar looking design with the integrated bracelet. It takes design cues from the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, the Patek Philippe Nautilus, and the Vacheron Constantin 222. Um, I have a smaller wrist size. I have six and a half inch wrists, and this watch wears great on my wrist. We'll look at that in a moment here. It has a Miyota 9039 movement. And as you'll notice, there is no date on the dial, and this uses a true no date movement. So what you get from that is there's not a ghost date position. It has a screw down crown. So we'll unscrew the crown, and it'll pop out. The, the, the crown, uh, let's just talk about the crown real quick. It, it looks nice. It has a square design, which matches kind of the square looking case. It's just a little um, a little difficult to use. Not too, not too bad, but it's just um, might take some getting used to. So first pop out here, actually the first pop right here, you're in the hand winding position. And then next pull out, you're in the hand setting, hacking and time setting. So this is a prototype watch. There are some changes from this. The fit and finish will be improved as, as always, always the case with a prototype watch. So you have some notes here. So these prototypes were CNC machined and did not use a manufacturing uh, process. The end product will be about 30% bar better with sharper lines and better finish. I do like the reliefs here in the case. Looks very neat. Also it does not have a display case back, which is fine. And the benefit of not having to display case back is that this watch is nice and thin. It wears wonderfully on wrist. I have no complaints about how this watch wears. It does have a butterfly clasp, which, you know, it fits with the, the um, design of the watch being a dress watch. I'm typically not a fan of butterfly clasp. And this one here has a little added complexity of this piece in the middle, meaning that you can only open it up one way. If you try to open it with the bottom part first, it won't come open. So let's zoom in on the dial. It has this nice waffle pattern texture. It's not a true uh, square grid pattern either. It matches the case shape with the way that the Grooves are machined in here. So let's go over the dimensions of the watch. The diameter, so-called diameter, from here to here is 38.6. That does not include the crown. Lug to lug is 46.72. And then I measured, we'll call it the fixed lug width. It's not really fixed. The centerpiece does articulate a little bit, but if you bring it all the way down like this from here to here with this 
sort of a fixed center link. It gives you um, lug to lug of 49, which is still uh, a good size. So let's get this on wrist and you'll see how it drapes over. It fits really well on wrist. I have had a couple other integrated uh, watches with integrated bracelets and they don't fit as well as this one does on my wrist. Six and a half inch wrist with 52 millimeter wristband. I really do like this bracelet. They're smaller H links, but they articulate very well. I like how each link catches the light. Zoom out here for a moment, get a little bit different perspective. So it takes a lot of design cues from Gerald Genta's famous watches. Nice and thin as well. You almost forget this is on wrist. So to finish talking about the specs, I did mention the thinness of this watch. It's nice and thin at 9.75 millimeter. I'll show this compared to my SKX. I get a sense of the thinness. Here we go. So the SKX, uh, this one here is 14 millimeter thick. Yeah, I know I'm comparing a dive watch to a dress watch, but I think all of us have had or have seen a Steiko SKX. So it gives you a good reference for size. So the integrated bracelet tapers from 22.7 millimeter down to 16. So it just aids aids to the comfort, adds to the comfort on your wrist. Check out the crown. Again, this is a prototype, so I wouldn't judge it for any uh, fit and finish issues you, you may see with this. Just the overall design intent. I, I think this would be a great looking watch. They offer I believe, four different dial colors. Um, like I said, I'll leave a link to the Kickstarter and you can go over there and check it out. This watch is $395 on the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, from what I read, that is the actual cost of production. So they're not making money on this per se, just wanting to get their name out there. Uh, last time I checked, the campaign was about uh, about halfway there. I really do like that it's brushed. From this view here, you see the brushed bezel, the brushed case. Then you look at it from the side, the side of the bezel is polished. As well as there's a bevel here. So let's look at some of the changes. So I have applied Superluminova on the minute and hour hands. We'll take a look at that at the end of the video here. The clasp will be better engineered for a smoother mechanism. The crown size will increase from five and a half to 16. I'm sorry, five and a half to six. It will be perfectly centered in this center of the case and the horizontal slits will be perfectly centered in the middle of the case. Yeah, so I see what they're saying there. It's a little bit uh, fatter on the bottom than the top. And the case is just screwed in the four corners there and it still gets 100 meter water resistance, which uh, I find impressive seeing how it's a screwed case back. All right, let's pause the video and we'll check out the loom. All right, so here is the loom. It's um, not quite as bright as what you see on video, but I think the loom is very good considering this is essentially a dress watch. And uh, maybe more evenly and better applied in the full production model. So as always, thank you for watching. 
And if you could hit the subscribe button, I would appreciate it. Like the video, leave a comment. Uh, let me know what you think of this watch. I think it's a uh, good value for $395, considering it has the Miyoto movement, sapphire crystal, and the integrated bracelet design.